I don't really like cars or driving, and yet I chose to move to the land of BMW, Porsche, Mercedes-Benz, Michael Schumacher, and of course, the legendary Autobahn. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to the German Autobahn, where speed knows no limit. Well, around 70% of the highway network has no permanent speed limit. Then there are the many traffic jams and roadworks to take into account. Germany is one of very few countries without a universal speed limit. And the tempo limit debate is a hot topic in Germany right now, with arguments based on safety, the environment and personal freedoms. In any case, most people don't actually drive that fast anyway. The average speed for a car in a limitless zone is 122 kilometers per hour. Fancy a spin on the German Autobahn? Then make sure to follow these golden rules. First up, the Rechtsfahrgebot, which means you should only use the middle and left lanes for overtaking, and then return to the right lane. While traffic is flowing, you are not allowed to overtake another vehicle on the right. And if traffic builds up, drivers immediately start forming a Rettungsgasse, or rescue lane, in case emergency services need to get through. While we're on the topic of rules, Germans can drive accompanied at 17 and unaccompanied at 18. Penalty points for speeding or other traffic offences are known as points in Flensburg because that's where the traffic authority is located. Getting too many points, particularly if you commit an offence involving drugs or alcohol, will result in your licence being revoked. It will only be reinstated after a potentially long and expensive medical psychological assessment known colloquially as the idiot test. One place I always come across Germans on holiday, the car wash. And back in Germany, you'll see many of them queuing up to clean their beloved cars on Saturdays. Well, if you've watched the episode where I'm dressed like this, you'll know there are strict rules on how and where you can wash your car in Germany. In 2020, 77% of households here owned at least one car. A whopping 84% of motorised personal transport takes place by car. And those stats have barely changed in the past decade. In one survey, 55% of respondents said they experienced joy simply from seeing their car. But a different study revealed that the younger generations are much less emotionally attached to their vehicles. Was bedeutet Ihnen Ihr Auto? Alles. Ist mein Liebling. Es bedeutet mir eigentlich eine Freiheit. Persönlich? Nicht viel. Freiheit mit Mobilität. Autos. Vom Design her interessieren mich schon, aber ansonsten nicht so. Obwohl ich in der Autobranche 40 Jahre gearbeitet habe. Ist Deutschland zu autoabhängig? Ja, es gibt viel zu viele Autos. Man guckt rum und die Autos sind überall. Man sollte Auto fahren dann, wenn eben keine vernünftige Alternative besteht. Ich wohne auf dem Dorf, ich muss fahren. Ne? Der Personennahverkehr, also der ÖPNV, müsste noch besser sein, damit man häufig darauf verzichten kann. Und es müsste mehr Carsharing-Angebote geben. Aber es ist natürlich auch ein großer Wirtschaftsfaktor und man möchte natürlich, dass sein eigenes Land gut dasteht. Ne? Also die Industrie ist wichtig für Deutschland. Okay, let's back it up. The German Karl Benz is credited with inventing the modern automobile. His wife Bertha Benz was apparently the first person to make a proper trip in a car when she took two of her sons from Mannheim to Pforzheim in 1888. Future German Chancellor and then Mayor of Cologne, Konrad Adenauer, was responsible for the first stretch of highway in Germany, which ran between Cologne and Bonn. But in the 1930s, the Nazi party tried to take credit for establishing the German highway, known then as the Reichsautobahn. Hitler also set his sights on a compact car that could be made for the masses. And that's where VW comes in. Volkswagen literally means the people's car. The onset of the Second World War shifted production from civilian to military vehicles. So it wasn't until the end of 1945 that the Volkswagen factory, then under British control, finally began mass production of the now famous Beetle. The VW Beetle shook off its Nazi past and became a symbol of West Germany's economic recovery. In 1955, the millionth Beetle rolled off the production line in Wolfsburg. Soon this and other car models became symbolic of freedom, travel and status in Germany. While the West had its Beetle, the East had its Trabant, or Trabi. The iconic cars were made in Spickau and Saxony. The outer body was made of hard plastic, and the waiting list to get your hands on one was 12 to 15 years. Photos of East German cars driving into and through the West are among the most iconic images of German reunification. And what about now? The car industry is still deeply embedded in the German economy. It's the biggest industry in the country. It employs hundreds of thousands of workers and indirectly supports many other industries too. A third of all research employees in Germany work in the automobile branch. German cars have long had a reputation for innovation. 
Audi's rather clinical 1970s slogan, Vorsprung durch Technik, progress through technology, has stuck in the international perception of Germany. There have been some serious bumps in the road, not least of all the diesel emissions scandal a few years ago, and a reluctance to adapt the industry for a more sustainable future. Now the VW Group is actually second in the world in terms of electric car sales. The frontrunner, Tesla, is planning to open a gigafactory near Berlin. And consumer interest is also on the rise, thanks to attractive subsidies and environmental concerns. And when it's günstiger ist für die Kunden, then werden die natürlich E-Autos kaufen. Aber dafür muss auch wieder die Infrastruktur verändert werden, die Ladestationen müssen verbessert werden. Da habe ich ein Problem mit, das ist halt auch alles nicht wirklich öko. Da bin ich nicht für. Erstens sind sie noch nicht reif und man weiß auch nicht, wie man damit fährt. Und 200 Kilometer oder so was, das bringt ja nichts. Die Frage wird eher sein, wie sich Mobilität komplett verändert. Also ob es wirklich so sein wird, dass alle ein eigenes Auto haben oder ob wir andere Mobilität haben. Thanks to the many viewers who requested this topic. I'm just glad I managed to get through the whole episode without having to drive a car. Talk to us in the comments about your Autobahn adventures and your thoughts on Germany's car-loving reputation.